Peace, peace, uh, Miss Elena. Peace, uh, Shema. Peace, peace, uh, Willie. What's going on, man? Peace, peace, uh, Miss Elena. Peace, uh, Shema. How my sound is? My sound good out there? I want to make sure I'm sounding crisp and it's not sounding distorted. If the sound good, let me know if the sound good. Peace, now go, Zell. Peace. Hotel Center in Monica. So that means ETM Hotel Center in Monica. So my sound good? I think Ms. Ellen said it's okay. It's good. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I'm good and crisp. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to uh, play some little music real quick, but I'm wide. Uh, I, I uh, Send some invites out to uh, in a few groups. So give me just a second, and I'm gonna get started. So just check out the music till I get started. I'll get started in about five minutes. Just let me invite a few more people. Peace, to all, Tasha. Started. I just wanted to play some music while I was trying to. Chris share. McDaniel loves the share. spotlight, but doesn't care oh. much for President Trump. Trying to share it in a few groups real quick. Uh, Hotel, uh, Sean. Uh, Hotel, uh, Sabre Wujow. Peace, peace, uh, Kendall, uh, Anderson. Hotel, uh, Sean Liz. But let me go on and get started real quick. Uh, Man in the full knowledge of himself is a superb and supreme picture of creation. When man becomes possessor of the knowledge of himself, he becomes master of his environment, the captain of his own ship, the director of his own destiny, the accomplisher of his own ends. 
Man should understand himself because man is full of knowledge, and this knowledge is a gift of nature. When Mother Nature created man, she deprived him of nothing. He was given the faculty of understanding all things around him. His faculty for understanding has not been taken away from him. None of his senses have been taken away from him. So there is no excuse for the black man. Who brings in my team, red, black, and green, the queen, the king, the blue, now screen, I see. I'm red with my team, red, black, and green, queen, the king, the moon, the screen, I shake, green, purple, the moon, the I shake, five, purple, the I shake. All right. Uh, today's presentation is um, called African Fabrics and weaving slash technology presentation part one. This is part one of two presentations. Part two, I will be doing tomorrow on my uh, YouTube channel, Kofi Paisar TV. So if you hadn't subscribed, please go subscribe and hit the bell. But uh, the presentation part two was gonna be the presentation I was gonna present, but uh, I had to present this information before I present the information on uh, the information for part two uh, tomorrow. So again, this is African Fabrics and Weaving slash Technology Presentation, part one. Uh, peace, 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 Brother Jadar. Peace, uh, James. Uh, peace, 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 and uh, uh, Brother uh, Yehuda. Uh, I spoke to everybody else. All right, this is my disclaimer. I always have to give a disclaimer before I get started. Um, and let me bag up. Let me bag up too before I even get started. I want to say ETM Hotel. I want to say Dua Dua U. I want to say Dua Nature. Heck a new end. I'm in Rob Kwa E. Sekum. Modupe. Fakmu Iwa Pele. Fakmu Alafie. Igun Mojube Iba I. Igun Gun Kiki. Igun Gun. So I just want to always do the special. I always want to give honor. Uh, and praises to the ancestors with everything that I do. So let's get let's get into it. Uh, the disclaimer is I am not a teacher, but merely a student sharing information. And that information provided is for educational purpose only. And if you are in doubt, do the research and have it verified by someone qualified. I reserve the right to change the focus of this presentation to shut down, sell, or exchange the terms of this you terms of use at my own discretion. All trademark design rights, copyrights, registers, names, models, logos, avatars, the signals, and marks used or cited by this website or property of their prospective owners. I reserve the right to add information as it comes available or adapt changes, improve information as it comes available in the future. Inputs wanted. Let me say that again. Inputs wanted. Changes, additions, deletions are encouraged. So I always have to give a disclaimer before I get started. Um, that's why at the end I always say, um, you know, me improving my information because I know information changes over time due to different findings and cert uh, certain things, information that may comes available that I may not have in the future. I don't mind going back and changes, inputs and cha uh, changes, additions, deletions, meaning that if I have something wrong or inaccurate, I don't mind you correcting me. I will not get in my emotions. I will correct it and learn from this. Uh, and um, make the corrections as, as needed. Deletions are encouraged. Please share the video uh, uh, too, family. Um, as this is my saying that I love to say, as I learn, we all learn. So this is a motto that I live by. That's why I say I am, I am not a teacher, but merely a student sharing information. I love to share information. Hotel uh, Jehuti, brother uh, Jehuti, peace, peace. Uh, the Nile Rock and Roller Jenkins. But um, I just love to share information. So I, I feel like if we all uh, grasp this and as we learn things, we should share it with uh, with others. I think this is the only way we'll be able to grow. This is the only way we'll be able to succeed. This is the only way I, that we'll be able to be successful as we learn things, no matter what it is, you know, whether it's big or small, learning and passing it on um, to the family. Peace, peace, uh, John's, uh, John. All right, before I get started, I'm gonna let, I took a clip from uh, a presentation that uh, uh, the Amin Ross, Squid, Amin Ross Squad did uh, 
um, Brother Uncle Kit, Brother Wu Jiao, I think Brother Ben was on there, and I think Brother Nahisi uh, was on there. So I, I took, and this was the other day. If you hadn't looked at it, go back and look at it. I think this was Sunday. I think it said Quick Bill is the title of it, but they went into a lot of different uh, top, well, two different topics. Uh, so I just wanted to take, I took a piece of this because it kind of goes with what uh, I'm going to be talking about. Humans didn't have clothes. It was the technology of clothes that allowed us to even leave Africa. Humans didn't have clothes. It was the technology of clothes that allowed us to even leave Africa. Humans didn't have clothes. It was the technology of clothes that allowed us to even leave Africa. Humans didn't have clothes. It was the technology of clothes that allowed us to even leave Africa. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted them to keep repeating it. Uh, so let's let's get into it. This is part one of this presentation, and this presentation is to show the creation of the creation of weaving fabrics of clothes, which is technology, and the technology to create the fabric slash textile, such as looms, spindles, dye, and needles. This presentation is in North Africa, Kemet, and part two will be in West Africa. So. I started in West Africa with the presentation, but in order for me, uh, I didn't want to present uh, that pre that presentation, so I went back and started another presentation, which this presentation, which will be uh, specifically in North Africa, dealing with uh, Kemet, dealing with the Bramich of the Kemetu, uh, and then part two will be dealing with West Africa, the bride of West Africa. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, neat. For those that might not know who Neat is, uh, peace, uh, George Garrett, uh, and peace, uh, Senate Lisa, and the brother, I can't, I don't know, I, I don't even want to pronounce his name uh, 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 wrong, Falima uh, uh, is the last name, but peace, peace, peace to you. Uh, so Neat, Neat uh, was an uh, ancient, uh, ancient goddess of war. And weaving, she was a patron goddess of the Red Crown of Lower Egypt uh, in the city of Zas, in the fifth known of Lower uh, Egypt in the Delta. According to Uinti or uh, Esna cosmology, and a lot of these things dealing with the cosmology. If you want to know more about the cosmology in Kemet, um, you can go to uh, Kofi Paisa TV. That's my YouTube channel. Me and brother Asa Emaka broke down the four cosmologies. Uh, in uh, Kemet, we, we did a thorough breakdown of cosmology. So if you want uh, to learn more about the different cosmologies, go to uh, my channel. Neat was a creator of the world and the mother of the sun, Ra. This, this made her the mother of all the gods and connected her with Nun, a member of the Agdag of Hermopolis, who with the personification of the premier waters. And by the way, when we break down, we don't give these Greeks names when we you hear Agdag and Hernopolis and goddess and so forth, but we give the proper names uh, uh, there. It was personification of the premier of waters of the chaos from which Ra emerged at the beginning of time. However, she was also credited with creating a pet, the great serpent and the swarm enemy of Ra by spitting out the waters of noon. This is one of the cosmologies. She was also with two different emblems, the shield, Cross with the, the two arrows uh, or the weaving shuttles. This is her. This is in this is a, a relief, uh, the relief out of the tomb of uh, Kaun Waset in the Valley of the Kings. Uh, Hotel, uh, I am my brother's keeper. She was associated with the two different emblems the shield cross, uh, the two arrows, and the weaving shuttles. It seems that cross arrows was her symbols during the pre dynastic period when she was a considered. Uh, to be the goddess of hunting and the war known by the epithet mistress of the bow, mistress of the bow or ruler of the arrow. The cross arrow also formed the emblem of the town Zos and the name of the known, which is her city, was the capital. This early record e example, example of Neith being written used by the cross arrows is the name of the queen Nehotep, thought to be the wife of Hor, our earlier dynastic period. It is uh, not clear when the arrows were replaced by the weaving shuttles or whether this was the result of confusion or an attempt 
to realign Neith as a goddess of weaving. One creation myth suggests that she created the world by weaving, and it will sometimes suggest that she was connected to funeral rites because she was responsible for weaving by mummy wrappings. Uh, Hotep, uh, Sotep and Ra, uh, peace, peace, uh, Orlando Branch. So I wanted to start off with Neat because in one of the cosmologies, she is considered the nature of of creation. She is associated with noon. And again, for those that want to know more about those cosmologies, you can go to my channel, Kofi Paisa TV, and me and Asai M. Cobb breaks down the four cosmologies and, and uh, Kemet. But she is the nature is uh, one of the cosmologies surrounding her is she is the nature of weaving. And this uh, presentation is, 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 is going to be dealing with uh, weaving, uh, dealing with uh, fabrics, dealing with the loom, the spindles, the needles, uh, and so forth. All right. This here on this side is an ancient Egyptian cloth uh, harvest scene from the tombs of Pesaras Tuna El Gabel, Egypt, photo by Ron Urgent. So I'm going to try to show as much uh, pictures as possible dealing with the primaries to kind of back up uh, some of the things that I'm saying. Uh, African textiles are a part of the culture, heritage of its people. The ancient Egyptians or the Remich are known to use looms as early as 4000 BC or wore linen clothing made with fibers from the flax plants which were beaten. First, the men and sometimes women will pick the fibers from the flax plants. These fibers uh, would come in the forms of strips and would would go on to make the threads for uh, that was spun. So the uh, the remix of the Kimutu, uh they planted this seed called. I mean, they planted uh, a, a a plant called the flax plant, and they would plant this flax seed uh, during the springtime. And they would uh, pick it during the summertime. They would harvest it in the spring, and then they would pick it, uh, pick this in the summertime. And then what they would do will they would uh, get the fiber from the plant. They would cut, as they say, they would cut, um, cut the plant, you know, at the bottom, you know what I'm saying, and script it up into different scripts. And we're gonna get into what they do after they cut the plant uh, and script it up into different different scripts. It was go. It was good to go on to make the threads that were spun. The threads find its dependence on the age of plan, the younger and finer. Now the men part is over, and the rest of the entire process was done by the women. Ancient uh, Egyptian women of the Remich uh, would usually make a clothing at home through their. Uh, though there were also garments making shops, which enlisted the help of the women to make clothing. And sell. So um, yeah, they also the women would make uh, make them make the clothing at home, and they also had clothing shops. We'll get into uh, uh, that as well. They had shops where they where you had these weavers that would go in and make the fabric uh, for the clothing. And this is um, ancient times. All right, flax. So I talked about flax. So let's get into a little bit about flax. The flax seeds. This was the fabric. This was the yarn. That they actually use in order to create the fabric or the clothing. Flax has to be used at, used in Middle East since the fifth millennium BCE. In Egypt, its role was probably more important than any in any many other cultures. And Egyptians rarely used wool and cotton. They didn't start using cotton until uh, the Romans uh, uh, came into Egypt around. Um, uh, I think 30 BC, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they started using cotton. They started getting cotton from uh, from India, being, India being imported into uh, uh, into that region. Uh, cotton was also known during much of the ancient history. It was seen as a gift of the Nile, and the hymn of happy has it. People are clothed with the flax of his field. Doing the old, and if you you understand the hymns of happy, we're talking about the happy uh, the happy Aris or the happy river that we call the Nile, or we're talking about the nature, uh, the nature happy. Doing the old kingdom, uh, an official called Majatin, um had his career written down. Being an overseer of all flax was not at least as many honors bestowed upon him. So it was an honor for those who. Um, 
who was an overseer uh, of, of picking the picking the flax. And this here is an image of the flax plants on this side here. The plant takes about a hundred days to grow from seed to mature plants with a height of between 60 centimeters to metrics. The flax harvest precedes the wheat harvest. The flax plants were gathered in whole when they were in bloom. If better fiber could be produced from young plants, the Egyptians or the Remich or the Kimatus were well aware of this fact is a test to in the documents. Flax fibers are among the longest and strongest of all natural fibers used by man. They even gain the strength when wet due to the high percent contents which acts like a glue under moist conditions. They dry quickly and resist decays better than most other natural fibers. So the flax plant, flax plant was uh, created the fiber. The spinning, the linen, the results of yellowish or grayish fibers were in the form of flax, 60 to 80 centimeters long scripts, each consisting of 20 to 40 single fibers. These scripts were then divided into strands and required thickness. Until the late period, many pairs of scripts were sliced together ends and the ends were twisted into wools. So this here is where they're talking about, where I talked about where they went in, picked, the, plucked the flax seeds and then began to split the flax seeds in half and started splitting them together in order to make yarn. So this is the concept of where yarn come from, Hotep uh, saying, uh, uh, saying I'm in my at ra um, a yarn come from. These scripts were then divided into strands of a required thickness until late period, many of the pairs of scripts were spliced together ends to end and twisted into rolls, which was the spun into thread. Egyptians or the remitch or the chemical spinners often used two spindles, stimulus, uh, with balls of flat wools lying on the ground or in low containers, which served as a sort of distaff. Sometimes the spitter stood on the foot stools in order to have the great greatest distance possible between the spindle and the flax. In later parts of the first millennium BCE, the splice and the twist techniques was abandoned in favor of draft spinning where the fibers are drawn from loose mass, raw materials gather the staves. In the session of the nether, desserts, desserts, flax grain. Okay, appreciate that, uh, Sin. This is red, I mean. Okay. Woven. Woven linen, we talk I mean weaving, we're talking about weaving. Weaving uh linen has been known in Egypt, uh, uh Kemet, uh since 5000 BCE. The oldest depiction of a loom was founded in Badara, which Badara is in a region of Upper Egypt. We know Badara is uh, is known uh before the pre-dynastic of the agriculture, agriculture area, pre-dynastic, uh the pre-dynastic period, Badara. Uh, on the pottery dish dating from the middle of the 15th millennium BCE, while the first known picture of weavers were drawn during the Middle Kingdom. And here is a picture here on the side here. You can see the women. You can see the loom. Now, we'll be talking about the vertical loom and the horizontal loom. So this is the technology in order for our ancestors to create the technology called clothing for us to wear. And on this picture here, um, you know, and brother uh, uh, was Sibyl Wujal and Sinet Emiket talked about the imagery and the pictures and so forth dealing uh, with, the, with the Kemet imagery. Now on here, you can see this here is a vertical of this. This looks like a vertical loom here where they finna start uh, weaving uh, the fiber to make material or clothing and so forth. But in this depiction, it is not a horizontal. In the old kingdom, I'll talk about the horizontal loom, which was the technology that our ancestors created in order to weave and create clothing and different sorts of fabrics. But you have the horizontal loom and you have the, the vertical loom. Now, this would be the, the horizontal loom, even though it looks vertical. Now, when the Remitch created uh, our, their paintings and engraved on things and and painted on the walls and so forth in the depictions if they wanted to look behind this is why it looks like uh the 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 uh, loom is vertical when it's horizontal they 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 the scribes 
made it this way in order for you to look behind. So it is actually, the loom is actually horizontal. I, I hope I'm explaining this. I know uh, Sybil Wujow could explain this a little bit better than how I'm explaining it. But it is a horizontal, it's horizontal and, not, and not vertical. Even though in the New Kingdom, we're going to talk about the vertical and I'm going to show a reduplication of the looms, the horizontal uh, looms. But in the Old Kingdom, they only deal with the vertical I mean, with the horizontal loom and not the vertical loom, but it is a horizontal loom. But due to the depiction of the scribes, wanted to show the depictions of the the weavers uh, with 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 people behind the weavers. They painted it in this form. Hotep Ampu uh, Ampu uh, Maatra. Um, the looms was horizontal with the wooding supporting with the warp beams and the cloth beam uh, that could be rotated and which ends of the warp threaded were tied into which were woven cloths was a wound. The wraps yarns were lifted with two little sticks, lease rods in order to pull through the weft with the help of the shuttles, which according to as a depiction was already known in the old kingdom. The weft uh, was beating with a bent stick. Two women generally working in the looms. You can see the two women you would necessarily see in the images and some of the other images that I show. You're going to see the two, mostly the two women built down uh, with the horizontal loom weaving fabric. Uh, the women generally working in the loom earlier times, crouching as the looms were very low. But sometimes looms were made for three or even four weavers. When the, the Egyptian or the Remitch or the Kimitu wanted to show things, okay, and I, I put it in here. Uh, when the uh, Remitch wanted to show things which were behind each other on a horizontal plane, they drew them above each other. Thus, the loom in this, this picture may look as if it were vertical when in reality it is horizontal. So this, I, I did put it in here. So again, when the scribes painted or engraved certain things and they wanted to show the depiction behind they would, the people will be, uh, the, the the depiction will look like it's horizontal when it's when it's vertical. All right, now I, I explained the looms. Now this is technology. I'm 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 doing this in all to yes aspect review. That's what it was. Yes, that's that's what it was. And I know Seba Seba Wuja could talk about this a little bit more. So. Now I talked about when the vertical loom, so now let's get into the horizontal loom because I'm tying this technology in that our ancestors did in order for us to create clothing. Because without our ancestors creating the spindle, without our ancestors creating the needle, without our ancestors creating the loom, without our ancestors taking the flex, the flex and creating this fabric called linen, that a lot of us have in our homes this linen fabric fabric in order to create clothing and other different types of fabric. They created these weaving techniques and this technology in order to build them. Clothing is a tech is technology. These these things that they created to create these fabrics is technology. Vertical looms with a heavy wooden frames came into use during the New Kingdom, and movable poles supported the warp beams. The leash rods lifting the warp yarns were worked with the help of the lever. Peace, uh, peace, uh, uh, brother, my, uh, brother Leo. Uh, leash lifting the warp yarns were worked with the helps of the livers. The whips were beating with a sleigh, which later replaced by a comb. The cloth of the breath beams was at the foot of the loom. The weavers sat in front of, of the little stools. See, the weave was working on the ground floor of the house of the jet. Now, on the vertical loom that I showed a while ago, uh, or the depiction on the wall, you could see actually the weavers, the women, with the vertical loom built down where they begin start to begin to weave fabrics. Now, that was the horizontal loom. This here would be the vertical loom, and I couldn't find a depiction on the wall of the vertical loom I can only find was reduplications of the horizontal of the, of the horizontal loom, but we know the horizontal looms was made during the new uh, during the new kingdom, and it was made up under the jet uh, Jehuti Nefer. So I only found the reduplications here, but most of the other people I'm going to show you the primaries and not the reduplications that I have here on the side. 
but you can see, uh, let me go back. You can see the loom. So this is the vertical loom. So you had the old kingdom, you had the uh, horizontal looms, and in the new kingdom, you had the vertical looms that the weavers would use to weave. All right. Uh, upright vertical looms from the tomb of Jehuti Nefer of Thieves, and I tried to find it. And you can see where the where uh, 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 Mr. N.D. Jeb Davis tried to reduplicate it, and you can see most of the times, like even if you go back to uh, um, some of the videos that we did to set you, one of the videos you can see where we had a reduplication, and you see where the reduplication was damaged due to whatever they took the picture of on the primary, it had to be, it was damaged also. Now I wanted to show you, now this is what uh, actually a vertical loom will look like now. So the invention or the technology that our ancestors created uh, in North Africa to start weaving fabric was the vertical loom. So this, uh, so I just wanted to show what it would kind of look like that we're still utilizing to the day this loom to weave fabric. So this would be the uh, uh, vertical loom here, and I mean the horizontal loom, and this would be the vertical loom. I'm, so I'm just showing you just a modern day depiction of what these looms will look like that our ancestors created uh, thousands of years ago. So they are the inventors of, 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 of weaving and so forth. So just wanted to show this picture. All right. Now here on this side is a picture. This is a wooden model of a weaver shop from the tomb of Menket Ra. So I, in earlier times, I showed you in Badara. Badara was in Upper Kemet. This was the pre-dynastic period where on the pottery of the Badara pottery where you could show uh, they, uh, the uh, um, uh, weaving taking place. Then I showed you... Um, Going into uh, the the old kingdom, the horizontal weaving, the pictures on the wall, which I'm going to still I'm going to continue to show pictures that's in Egypt. Got to continue to show the uh, the primaries. Now this is a model here that was in Min Min, Min uh, Maket Ra uh, tomb, which is in the Cairo Museum uh, in Egypt uh, now. So. This here is a pitch, and I'm going to show you like a lot of things. I'm going to show you some other things in Min, 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 Minket Ra uh, tomb and why he made these models of certain things that he had and so forth. But here you can see the vertical loom because, again, we're talking about the this actually is the middle kingdom. So from the old kingdom to the middle kingdom, the looms that create the fabric for the clothing, for the uh, um um, um, other different uh, types of designs or, or um, covers and so forth was created from the, this horizontal loom. So you can see here that Min, um, uh, Minket, in Minket tomb, the horizontal loom, which is in which Minket is in the New Kingdom. I think he's in the 12th Dynasty, if I'm not mistaken. So you can see the sister here kneeling down in front of the loom here. You can see the spindles of this sister that have the spindle with the thread. Uh, which the thread, which would be the flax seeds. Again, I talked about the flax seeds and how they harvest the flax seeds and then use the bottom of the flax seeds and cut them into scripts and then splice them, uh, uh, entangle them together in order to create what we call yarn today. So here is the depiction here. The woman will take a collective strips of the fiber and begin to slice them down to the length in order to make them finer. Then they would splice them and by rubbing them in a flat surface. In the model, those are the three women at the fair, fair right with the back to the walls of the crouching on the floor. Here, depiction of here. The women would then twist and splice threads using spindles here. And in order to form balls, or yarns and thread. So again, just talking about our ancestors uh, took an, uh, what we call yarn today to create fiber. They used flax seeds in order to create fiber. They created the looms in order to weave. So they create. They were the in, the innovators of weaving. So they created this technology called loom in order to weave. In order to weave, they created what we call yarn today. 
from the flax seeds that they harvest in the springtime and pick in the summertime, splice, I mean, slice thin, splice them together, entangle them to create what we call yarn and put them on a spindle and then onto the loom in order to create the fabric out of the flax seeds. The women then twisted the flax thread using spindles in order to form balls or yarns of threads and models. Those are three women standing in front of the previously uh, mentioned women, Hotep uh, uh, Senshan, uh, Hotep uh, Jehudi Asara, Peace Peace Bunny. Uh, okay. In models, those are three women standing in front of the previous mentioned women, and they are holding two spindles each. Next, do you see a horizontal loom, which we see here, which I told you will see in the old kingdom and in the middle kingdom, and then in the new kingdom, they created the vertical looms. Over uh, them uh, to weave, at a late period during the new kingdom, vertical looms began to be used. Once the raw fabric was produced, garments could be fashioned out of them. As an entire process was very labor intense, most ancient Egyptians of the Remich of the Kimutu would sew uh, loose robes and light garments with very little stitching and usually no frills. All right, so I talked about them taking the flax seeds and creating what they created. They started creating linen. They started creating linen out of the flax seeds. So I talked about them splicing it into thin layers and then uh, means uh, slicing them in a thin layer, splicing them, uh, intertwining them together. So you can see here uh, a picture. These are in the museums here in Egypt. Uh, and you can see that they kind of look like yarn. But these are the fiber from the flax seeds that I talked about and broke down earlier. And as they would intertwine them together, they would intertwine them in the, in the balls, as I explained earlier. On a, on a previous slide. So flax slash linen fibers was used, was removed from the stem of the flax plant by scripping. Fibers obtained in these ways was in the form of flax scripts, the length equivalent to the heights of the main stems of the plant. These were kept until needed in large groups, twisted into hanks, and the, the uh, with the spliced and twist technique the next stage after obtaining the fiber scripts was the form that was termed a roll. First, the wider scripts were split down lengthways according to the fineness of the yarn's desire. Then the scripts was joined together by splicing, and a number of balls of splice rolls were also found in Lohan, which is in Kimmy. Uh, UC 7509, I'm not going to go over the uh, museum numbers, but Lohan, four twisted hanks of flax fibers, 13 to 15 centimeters long, probably late Middle Kingdom, about 1850 to 1750 BC. From Lohan, two balls splice roll, probably in the Middle Kingdom, above 1850 to 1750. Here is uh, uh, the spindle, um, the needle, and so forth. So these, I just wanted to show these because this is the technique. This is not the technique, but this is the technology that our ancestors created in order to create the technology of clothing. So here is the two wooden spindles, uh, uh, the wooden spindles and uh, the needle and so forth, the spindle here. So this is in the museum also in, uh, in Kemet. All right. This is also from the tomb of Men, uh, Menka, Menket Ra. And this is, uh, what's the name? And look at the depictions also. Look at the depictions and see what color previously, I mean, see what color they are majority wearing. And the color, and some of the pictures I already show with the paintings and the things on the wall, you're going to predominantly see them in white. They had other colors, but predominantly you're going to see in white. Most of the ancient Egyptians prefer their clothing to be white or whitish. And so dyeing fabric was not very common, though it existed. So I'm going to talk more in the presentation on part two about dyeing, which we're going to go into West Africa in part two. Today, we're just going to specifically deal with North, uh, North Africa because we have to understand and I want to establish here, um, here the technology. Where did this technology come from? And then it spread it all, all over because we know in the beginning of time, as uh, one of the uh, 
uh, the first slide that I gave where I uh, uh, um, had um, a piece of Uncle Kit, Brother Uncle Kit, uh, where, uh, uh, where he did a presentation where I had it repeating what he talked about in the beginning, how when they was talking about the, the homos, so they was going into the homos on their, uh, what's name? Homos is humans for those that may not know what homo is. So he started going into the different stages of humans. So he was stating that how we was naked and then our ancestors created the technology called clothing. So clothing is a technology, but I also wanted to go back and show how these things came into existence and what region or what evidence that I can find that connect these people with creating the loom, the spindle, the needles, uh, uh, and creating uh, this such fiber that we call linen in order to create clothing, robes, and so forth. So I wanted to start in North Africa and then go into West Africa in part two, because a lot of the clothing that we wear today is specifically coming from out of West West Africa and so forth. And I know a lot of people talk about a lot of the material today that comes from out of Africa today. You have the Dutch, uh, uh, the Dutch companies in there that's creating the fat of the fabric and so forth. And we're not creating fat fiber fiber anymore, which I'll touch a little bit on that tomorrow. Uh, with the Dutch and with the Portuguese coming in in the 1500s and the Dutch coming in during the 17th, the, uh, the 17th century. But uh, the final product, as we see it on the linen, covers the mummies or the sheets found buried with the dead in the tombs or even in the depiction of the painting was truly remarkable. So fine, white linen, so light and airy that it sometimes transparent because we have to understand them having white clothing or creating this linen, this, this white linen from the flax seeds was, it, it was lighter. And again, you can see that they was in, you, we know Africa, the sun is closer to the equator there. And we know that is a hot and tropical continent. So they had created this linen because the linen, you know, they could get more air in, you know what I'm saying? They can be more cooler with this white linen. So you will see them depicted more in images uh, in white, but you will see them in other different colors as well. But more of the depictions, you will see them with white clothing on. And that is the reason because they, they choose the linen and the white because it was cooler because Africa uh, was hot. Small amount of silks were traded in the Eastern uh, Mediterranean possible as early as the second half of the second millennium BCE and trace of silk has been found in Egypt tombs. Animal skins above all leopard skins were sometimes worn by the priests, uh, uh, by the pharaohs in the rows. And those that are familiar, I'm talking about the, the, the Sim priests. Uh, the Sim priests were wearing leopard, leopard skin. First servants of God, such outfits were found by Tuk Ak Amun tomb and were depicted quite frequently on the wall tombs. And they found a lot of fabrics and materials in Tuk Ak Amun uh, um, tomb. At a time, king, the kings and queens were decorated ceremony clothing adorned with feathers. All right. Here is a couple of other depictions. As again, I told you most of the colors that you will see the remit of the Kimmel to wear were white. They did, pre they did have some where it was not white, um, um, but specifically white. And they did show, which in part two, I'm going to show how they created dye from the plants. So we'll get in part two, I'll get into the dye, uh, the dyeing process because they use dye, but they didn't use dye all the time. Like West Africa used dye a lot in their material. So I'll get into that in part two tomorrow, uh, which will be on my channel and not on Facebook. So I'll get into the dye, explain the dye, how they use the dye and even show a video of the dye, even show some of the dye, uh, show some of the uh, uh, um, the places that they use to, uh, well, I'm going to say shops for uh, better terminology, shops that they use in order to create dyes that was uh, buried in the hole. But we'll, we'll get in that tomorrow. But these are just some of the other depictions. You can see a lot of the depictions are white, 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 white. So they use white. And again, white was used because white, was more or they used linen that they created from the flax because the linen cloth was lighter you know it was lighter and it was uh cooler for them to wear because again we know the sun is closer to that equator of uh, of, of africa 
uh, piece, uh, Maisha uh, Hotel, Hotel Shejmu Sh Pata Armor. All right. Laundry. Now, we have been taught or been up under the misconceptions when we look at Africa, we say that Africa, our ancestors and those that are over there now do not bathe, especially in ancient times. You know, we did not bathe and so forth. And cleanliness was next to godliness in uh, Kemet. So that they, they, so that they, even when they, they created this technology called clothing, they created this technology called loom spindles, needles, um, 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 linen, and so forth. They, they did bathe and they did clean the material that they had, so they did not walk around after they created this technology of clothing and different types of fiber that it was dirty. They wore linen garments which they are special carefully to have always fresh washed. Cleanliness was apparently next to godliness in ancient Egypt or in Kemet or Tymeri, if we want to get by um, the, the names, and who was closer to the gods than the pharaohs uh, themselves. Since earlier historic times, the titles of chief washers of the pa palace and washers of the pharaohs are known and keeping a royal clothing lily white was the duty of the chief bleacher. So at those times, our ancestors did create something where they was able to cre uh, keep the technology of clothing that they created clean. Manual washing clothing was hard work. Soap was unknown to the ancient Remich. So Lao made a castor oil and salt pastry or some such of substance or detergent made of soap work and aso were used. So they made this certain type of oil or detergent from this certain from these certain types of plants in order to clean themselves and also clean the technology of clothing that our ancestors made. The laundry was beating, rinsed, and wrung by pairs of workers. By the 1200, by 1200 BCE, there were a fireproof boiler in the wash house, and the hot water lightened the workload. Many above, so you can see that our ancestors, damn, that's slick. <laughs> yeah, that, that is slick. So, you know, I'm glad, you know, so I'm always trying to point out things that our ancestors did so we can get out of the misconceptions that, that we didn't come from greatness. Africa sustains the whole world, but I know a lot of us is illiterate to things due to us being taught through school and indoctrinated and the three uh, and, 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 and certain religions and so forth. So we have a misconception of what our ancestors did. So without our ancestors creating clothing, our ancestors creating clothing, in order for them to create clothing, they created the fiber from the flax plant, which we call yarn today. They created the loom in order to weave, created the invention of weaving by creating the loom, which is also a technology that was created in Africa. Many above all poor people who had access to faculties had to do to their laundry under the, t the times difficult conditions washing on the shores of the river of the banks of the canal which had advantage or not having to carry a lot of water in heavy earth pots and could be dangerous so though those so the upper ocelots you know they had things that what we call wash houses today man i love our true history of ourselves. I do too, man. I love bringing out piece, piece of uh, 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 Sahan Pickett. I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, uh, sister. Um, so they created these, what we call wash, wash houses today, and they created these different detergents from different plants, the soap warp and the asphodel, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, to create these different detergents in order to clean the fiber and also clean themselves. And then later on, they began to use these fireproof boilers uh, in their wash houses, hot water, lighting to workload. Because again, when we wash clothes, we put the clothes on what? Well, we put the clothes on. When we wash in our white clothing, what do we put the clothes on? We put them on hot water in order to get uh, uh, the clothing cleaner. 
And again, our ancestors, peace, uh, uh, Sister Marie, um, 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 and uh, so in a lot of the depictions that I have shown uh, on the walls and so forth has been, they have been in white linen. We know white linen, white clothing was produced, even though they created dye in that region, they use white because Africa is a tropical continent. The sun is closer to the equator of that continent, so it is hot. So linen that they created this, so they use white because white were was not as as hot, and it was they can keep cool in the white. And again, the hot pots was used to boil to uh to clean the white thoroughly. I talked about them also wearing uh, leopard skin. And when you understand the uh, the uh, Kimutu or the Ramich culture, and we talk about the priest, we're talking about there's so many different branches of the priest, but we're talking about the Shem priest. So the Shem priest will wear a leopard. So you can see here, this is a statue. Uh, I can't. I think this is in uh, Hekka Bata, which is uh, y'all may know as Memphis, Egypt. And this is in the, the temple of Pata. And you can see here the statue here. And he has on a leopard skin robe. This is a Sim priest. We can see the nose busted off. And that's a, uh, we know why the nose was busted off when Napoleon uh, uh, came into Egypt and so forth. And here is another depiction on the wall here. You can see, and again, the colors, our, our ancestors. And you can see the Shem priest here with the leopard skin on. You can see here in this depiction here, this brother has the dad symbol here. Uh, this is the Shem priest here. The Shem priest. And this is, uh, I know a lot of y'all that do the metanature <laughs> uh, know what this sign is, uh, this symbol is. All right. Here is the tomb of Menket Ra in Thebes Waset. So here is the tomb here. And in the tomb, they they found so many different things in his tomb. And again, I showed you the model of, of in Menket Ra temple. There was so many things that they took out of the temple. So and he was showing the display of the weaving of the horizontal loom, the weavers, inside the women with the spindles and so forth uh, in there. And this Menket Ra is in the 12th dynasty. The models like one shown on the right side of the slide may look like toys, or therefore appear to be doubtful historical value. But to the archaeologist who has little written data on the daily life of the Egyptian or the remnants of the Kimutu of 2000 BC, such models give much information about con contemporary activity. Little wooden models of the dead man servants at their work provides for his welfare and manning his boats constitute a part in the tomb's equipment of every every well to do remit a chemical in the Middle Kingdom, 2160 to 788 BC. He believed the life that the life after death would in all respect to be a continuation of the one on earth and a fact that dependence on these models for making the possible accounts for their being accurate. So anybody that deals with the opening of the mouth ceremony uh, with the Shem, that's right, the opening of the mouth uh, uh, ceremony. Um, the Adag symbol that I show, peace, Josh. Uh, fascinating how they keep clothing white. How did they clean bodily stains to keep clothing white? Did they use the cloth uh, with the medical uh, bandage? Yes, they used from the material. They made cloths and so forth. Uh, the linen cloths, which we have in our house, the lemon uh, tablecloths, uh, the linen wear, the linen uh, uh, pants and so forth that we wear today. Yes, they made those to clean that they extracted from those different plants. They used oils to create this different type of detergent to clean the clothes and to clean them, uh, to clean themselves in it. Uh, um, Lisa. Um, also, um, <clears throat> if you understand the Ramich culture, not even just the Ramich culture, if you understand African culture, if you understand our culture, you understand that 
we understand energy. And when we talk about the Ka, uh, the, the Ka and the Ba, when we talk about energy, we talk about the Yashi, you know, um, if we talk about the um, the Rika, uh, we're talking about the spirit, we're talking about energy. So our ancestors understood energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred from one state to the next. So they understood that we could not die because they understood our spirit could not die. So he created these different models and stashed them in the, the temples. And you can see this all throughout the, uh, uh, the culture in Kemet. You can see this all throughout African culture. Um, they were buried with so many different things because they wanted to take these things into the afterlife or into the ancestral realm. So they were buried with these things. So Men Menket Ra, uh, uh, which his temple is in Waset. You can go check it, check it out and verify it for yourself. And these are the things that they found, all these things that they found in his temple, the archaeologists that excavated the land and Thieves, which is Waset. And um, so he created these models of boats because he wanted to take the boats into the ancestral realm. He created a model of, of the weavers and the looms weaving because he wanted clothing in the ancestral realm. He wanted the boat in order to travel in the ancestral realm and so many other different things that they found in his tube that he used. He wanted to take in his afterlife so it can be his afterlife can be a ten, continuation of this realm that he was in. Uh, in the physical realm that he that he was in, he believed that life after death would, in all respect, be con a continuation of the one, uh, the one on earth, and the fact that he depended on these models for making the possible accounts for their for the, their being accurate. Representations of the daily activities contribute to his welfare. One of the important household pursuits represents in the manner is weaving of the clothes for his garments. So this was a important thing for him to have in there because again, he wanted those garments to go with him into the ancestral realm, into the Agungun. All right, here is another depiction. This is a girl dressed in sheer linen. This is off the wall tombs of Zarasa Ka Ra, uh, uh, at approximately around 40, 40 uh, 420. So a lot of the pictures that I'm showing, I'm, I'm actually showing the, 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 the uh, depictions of things that are actually on the wall in North Africa now and things or models that are in Africa now that's in the Cairo, in the Cairo Museum uh, now. So this is a woman here in linen. And again, it is in white. And again, it's, we know white is to keep them cool. You know what I'm saying? It's a cool color to keep them uh, cool because we know Africa is a hot and tropical continent. The fame of the fine linen uh, of ancient Egypt was deserved, and Egypt or Kemet may justly be called the cradle, if not the birthplace of linen. In their inscriptions, the, the Egyptians of the Remitch of the Kemetu prided themselves on their skills in raising flax and weaving it into clothing. So reiterating re again, they use the the fiber to make the linen clothing from the flax seeds that I showed on a previous slide of what flax is, and they planted flax in the springtime. And then they picked it in the summertime, scripted it into different scripts, spliced it and entangled it to, to, together to create what we call yarn today. Then created the vertical, the, the uh, horizontal loom and then started to weave this fabric that they created from the flax plant to create this linen clothing for us to have to have on. Uh, some of the walls paintings that decorate their tomb show us delightful, graceful girls attires in the sheer of white linen dress through which the flesh tones gleams and trick understood painters even in that earlier day. They have also many specimens of linen which prove that from earlier pre-dynastic times before 4000 BC through the whole Kemetu history weaving was one of the more accomplished arts. The linen they produced could be exceedingly delicated by 3000 BCE the uh, uh, Egyptian or the Remich weavers were capable of weaving the finest of cloth 
by with 64 warp threads and 48 web threads per centimetric. About, about the sixth dynasty, approximately 2100 BCE, cloth, it was said, it was so fine it could be pulled through the cynic, cynic ring. A similar cane was made by Pliny concerning the first millennium linen. During the 11th dynasty, while the cloth measurement 160 to 180 centimeters. Linen was a fabric of choice for living. The dead were also buried in it, and the and, and, and the, the mummifiers, uh, after removing the inner organs in the dehydrations of the corpse with hips of salt and natron. So we knew the ancestors uh, piece of uh, uh, Christopher. Um, um, also created what we call mortician science. When we know we so our ancestors created this science as well, mortician science, preserving the bodies. You know, this is where mortician science comes from. So they did certain things. They took out certain organs, such as the um, the brain. They took out uh, the stomach. They took out the liver. They took out the intestines. Uh, but they left the heart, and the heart was considered in Kemet the ib. The ib was con considered the consciousness. Considered the considered the mind. Uh, the dehydrating the corpse with the help of salt and natron, anointing with oils, with fine wraps it up upon narrow strips of linen. So that linen that they used to wrap the bodies up, what we call the sah of the sahu, or what y'all would call mummy wraps. This was linen that they was used to wrap the bodies up. So even the dead bodies was wrapped up in this technology called clothing. Arm, legs, even fingers was wrapped separately. This swabble afforded them uh, the protection of the, the goddess Tot. Linen was also part of the funeral offerings, uh, often symbolic uh, when written promise of offerings, uh, offerings of word. All right, here is another depiction here, and I forgot what wall this is on, but you can see the ancestors uh, harvesting uh, the flax plants. You can see them beating the linen, which I'll go into more specifically in part two tomorrow. Um, the beating of the linen uh, and so forth uh, with these tools that they use. You can see the harvesting, uh, I mean, the, the picking of the flax here. Uh, you can see the sisters here and the, the loom here, uh, and which would... Uh, 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 on the, which will be a horizontal loom, and I explain why it looks vertical, even though I explained that they created the vertical loom in the old dynasty, and it went from the old dynasty and the middle middle dynasty, and then in the new dynasty, they created the vertical loom, which I showed you a reduplication. I wasn't able to show you that, and then I showed you what how the weavers are still using the horizontal loom and the vertical loom. I showed you a depiction of that how it looks today, it still looks almost similar to the ancestors creating the loom or this technology thousands of years ago. The ancestors talked and wrote about linen fabrics and linen items, bed linen, which we all have, linen tablecloths, which a lot of us still have or had in the past, and linen of clothes come from very early days of humanity. So our ancestors were the in inventors of this fabric called linen, which was created from the flax seed. So I tried to show much documentations or imagery that was on the wall in North Africa. So I wanted to show this, this, this presentation before I showed the part two when I'm dealing with West Africa, where I go more into showing of the fabrics, more into the dyeing process, more into the designs and why they designed it in a certain particular way uh, and so forth. But I wanted to show the technology where did the technology come from? So I had to show the loom. I had to show the spindles. I had to show uh, uh, the needles. I had to show what we, how they, where yarn comes from or the invention of yarn from the flaxseed, where the clothing or the material of the fabric um, comes from. So these are my references here. I hope uh, this presentation was very uh, educational for those that may have missed the presentation. Uh, you can go back and look at it. Um, I, it's, it'll also be downloaded to my YouTube channel, Kofi Paisa TV, tomorrow. But I had to do this presentation to set up the presentation for part uh, for part two. 
um, which will be, I won't do on Facebook. It'll be on my um, YouTube channel, Kofi Paisa TV. So if you hadn't subscribed to Kofi Paisa TV, please subscribe to Kofi Paisa TV. I'm going to go on about 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow um, to do uh, <clears throat> part two which will be in West Africa. This was dealing with the Pacific region of North Africa and the technology that created the technology of clothing. So we have to be very grateful for our ancestors. Our ancestors were very innovative. And I know we have been taught that our ancestors did nothing. They, they did nothing for society because this is what the food system or the school system teaches us. So I wanted to jump into this and then y'all be able to walk with me when I get into part two. Uh, um, tomorrow. These are all my references here. There were plenty of references. I didn't use one source. I use utilize many sources as possible um, as I can. I had a few other ones I could have used, but I didn't get through um, doing what I needed to do to extrapolate the data and do some other thorough research on them before I actually use those sources. But though these are my sources here, and again, Please go subscribe to Kofi Paisa TV, the channel that takes the black woman, the black man, and black child Eurocentric mind and Africanize it. I hope again that you know y'all learned from this presentation. It took me some time to actually do both of the uh, presentations. I hope I didn't let no one down you know, for uh, doing the presentations. Peace, uh, peace uh, Tawanda. I uh, appreciate that, uh, Senate Lisa, uh, for putting the, uh, the link in the bottom. For those that may not be, um, that may not know my, uh, that may not uh, be familiar with my channel, she got the link at the bottom right there. Click the link, go subscribe, hit the bell. So when I go live tomorrow, you will already be, uh, you uh, hit the bell. I go live, it'll notify you. That's what the bell for. It'll notify you that I'm going live, but I'll share it tomorrow. Again, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate y'all for uh, tuning in. And Shimim Hotel. Shimim Hotel means to depart uh, in peace. Of his own ends. Man should understand himself because man is full of knowledge, and this knowledge is a gift of nature. When Mother Nature created man, she deprived him of nothing. He was given the faculty of understanding all things around him. This faculty for understanding has not been taken away from him. None of his senses have been taken away from him. So there is no way to for the black man. I'm raising my team, red, black, and green, queen, the king, salute, now scream, I shake, spring, purple, love, and I shake, five, purple, different,